A major star leaving his current promotion, and according to all reports indicating that he is WWE bound, but is he actually? We're going to talk about it in today's upload. We're also going to discuss John Cena's latest comments, finding a way to close the pro wrestling chapter once and for all, finding his exit strategy, but why BC says it's more than likely going to be later rather than sooner. We'll talk all about it. And speculation, rumors, a lot of even reports indicating that this recently fired WWE female star will be a surprise in the Rumble. But this female star, recently fired from WWE, is speaking out. She actually commented on it. And what she says tells us everything we need to know. We'll talk all about it in this upload. And... And, 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 as we have done to nauseam in the past, we will once again revisit the Rock, Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes situation for WrestleMania. Because now the brother of Cody Rhodes, Dustin Rhodes, has given a statement. And he says, I would rather see my brother in the main event instead of The Rock. So yeah, I'd be pissed if it's The Rock, because I'd rather see my brother in the main event. No. Cody's brother would rather see him in the main event? That's a bad brother. See, a good brother would say, put my brother in the mid card. Better yet, doofus son-in-law, remove my brother from WrestleMania. He doesn't belong there. He needs another year of struggle and adversity. How dare you put my brother on WrestleMania? See, that's what a good brother would do. Cody's brother would rather see him in the main event, and we'd be pissed if it's The Rock. I would think so. It's his brother. How is that going to change anybody else's minds on how they view WrestleMania? But we're going to talk about it. BC, now that Dustin has given that statement, do you feel any differently about WrestleMania? Oh, I'm going to tell you yet again how I feel about WrestleMania in this upload. Trust me. Oh, and, but wait, there's more. My right-hand man on the channel, first ever channel member, Gold Card Board of Director, JR9 Gaming, with his 36th Amplified NXT Roundup from this week's show. A badass, all-inclusive review of NXT, a show that dipped back into the 600,000s for the rating, but had a lot of buzz around it. So how did we get to that number? Was this a good show or not so much? Jer9 Gaming has his roundup. We'll touch base on that in this upload as well. Let's waste no more time. Let's get right into it. Start with this big story, a megastar, and I do mean a megastar in the pro wrestling world, Japan's Okada. Leaving Japan the end of January, his contract expires and reports indicate he is headed to the States. And these reports are saying he is most likely WWE bound. For months, WWE supposedly has been trying to pursue Okada, trying to land Okada. Now, my people have never been able to validate those reports. Not saying it's not true, those reports, but... I did ask around a little bit more than usual, and I never got any confirmation or validation of those reports. My people tried and tried. <laughs> they just they were never, never able to uh, confirm what others were hearing. Again, not saying it's not true. It's just kind of funny how nobody else was hearing this. So it leads me to believe that nothing has been finalized as of now. But if he's leaving Japan, which looks to be confirmed end of January, my calendar is telling me that's basically now. It's the end of January. First 10 days of a month is the beginning. The next 10 is the middle. And the last 10 days of a month is the end. Well, tomorrow is the, what, 20th. There you go. So are you telling me that tomorrow, for instance, he's, he's a free agent ready to rock? The, the big issue here now, issue, I, I guess it's a good problem to have but it's still a problem nonetheless. The discussion that has to be had. Is he a better fit for WWE, for him and the company? Or would he be better placed in a company like Alternative Entertainment Wrestling, AEW? I say this because Vince McMahon, for instance, right? He would bring Shinsuke and people like Asuka, right? The Japanese talent that is just uber special. 
He would bring them to the dance, but then leave them on the dance floor by themselves. He'd bring them to the dance. He'd have Asuka and Shinsuke win the Royal Rumble, right? They're going to the grandest stage. And they are part of a a small group that couldn't get the job done on the grandest stage of them all, WrestleMania. Asuka failed. Shinsuke failed. Vince McMahon would bring them to the dance and then leave them hanging. There was no dancing partner. There was no date to the prom, right? Then you have, and they never really got over that hump. They never got back to the dance. They never, from that point on, they just became pretty much common folk in WWE to Vincent Kennedy. Then you have Paul Levesque McMahon. To his credit, to his credit, he tries to showcase them better. Tries to put them in a better light, right? For instance, Asuka, right? The tweak in her character should have been way more Kana Asuka with the whole Bel Air feud, but that's another story. At least there was a, a tweak, and then it pretty much hit a roadblock. Again, that's another story. But Io, Io, she got a lot in NXT, and it was so good to see because she's one of the best female wrestlers on the planet. She goes over to WWE. She could have easily been in irrelevancy, but she has an actual title reign, and that's saying something. For the female division to have a champion that's been a champion for a while and that is really good in all of her matches... So it's actually, it's making that title prestigious, not just EO. That's something that should be happening at all times. EO is in a good light. Shinsuke was plucked from irrelevancy and put into a storyline. Was it collecting L's to Cody Rhodes, for instance? Yes. But at least he was a part of the show in something meaningful. He was part of something, a story. They tried some new stuff with him, with the Tron. And all of these diabolical, devious promos. Right? Paul Levesque McMahon at least tries to put them in, the, in a better light. They both have the same issue, though. VKM and HHH. They don't know how to get over that hump with the Japanese talent. They don't know how to get that connection to the American audience, right? They hit that wall. They get to a certain point. McMahon took them to a point here. Levesque McMahon took them a little bit farther. And they can't get over that hump. So if Okada comes in, the question has to be raised. Is he? And how do you do it? Make him something more special than Shinsuke Nakamura. Because Shinsuke Nakamura is beyond special. Shinsuke Nakamura is top tier talent. So you bring in Okada. I have to ask, what's the expectations? What, what's the most he wants out of his run in WWE? I'm guessing he wants to be one of the top stars in the company. How are you true? How are you honestly, guys, going to get there? Uh, it's a good discussion. How are you really going to get there? Because if Okada doesn't have a set plan that HHH is willing to go with, and HHH doesn't have a clue how to get them over that hump, Okada, wouldn't he just be another mid card talent? Maybe a couple main event matches here and there. We'll see how many stars he can collect. We'll chant, this is awesome, but is it truly going to be a connection with the audience? I ask because Asuka, Io, Shinsuke, even taken a little bit farther by HHH, there's still that wall. So then the question is, would he be a better fit in AEW, alternative entertainment wrestling? There, you see him as a better fit because we've already seen him there. We've seen so many Japanese talents already wrestling with AEW, just not under long-term deals. So when you hear people like Will Ospreay, for instance, signed with AEW, it's not that big of a shock. He was already rubbing shoulders with these dudes. He was already having matches with AEW. So it's easy to say, yeah, Okada would be a better fit in AEW because you're used to it, right? You're comfortable with that. Um, it, it's what you've seen in the past already. But Okada, uh, one of the biggest stars in Japan, is leaving for the States to show up in AEW where the average viewership on a Wednesday night, their flag show is 850,000, right? That's their average. 
You could just look at the last two weeks. Two weeks ago, 790,000 viewership. This week, 890. So your average is always roughly 850. And that's Okada's ceiling. And that's only if he's a constant main eventer in AEW. Because history has shown us, the, the numbers, the statistics have shown us that when these Japanese talents come over and these promoters don't know what to truly do with them, they're not moving the needle like they should be. Or at least were in Japan. So my whole point is, whoever is able to land Okada, it's a major signing. I just hope they truly have a master plan in the works. Sit down with Okada, HHH and Okada, or Tony Khan and Okada, and truly pave out, map out a whole master plan on how to truly captivate the audience from this individual. Because Okada is more than just, wow, good matches! This dude's a megastar. But AEW lands him, and the truth is, very fast, if this isn't done correctly, very fast, he just becomes another member to the roster. And if WWE lands him, very fast, it'll be evident they don't know what they're doing with him. That's... That's the whole, this is what Okada himself has to take into consideration. If I'm leaving Japan, I'm coming to the States, I'm going to be a big star, obviously. That's the hope, that's the plan that I have. What's the best vehicle to get you to that destination? I don't know how you guys feel about it. Is it WWE or is it AEW? And and I'm not letting you off easy. How would you do it? Or he's just another guy on the roster. That's a shame. He's a megastar. It's quite, hey, Listen, it's a podcast in the wrestling community that asks these questions because they need to be because we've seen too many talents hit a wall. We've seen Shinsuke and Asuka hitting a wall for years in this company. (laughs) Years. Levesque McMahon takes them a little further. That's the good news, but it's clear he doesn't know how to get over that hump. EO is probably the best shining star now, and and knowing WWE, they're just trying to find a plan, the right person on how they're going to take it from EO rather than giving her good booking, because EO is basically doing this on her own. She has not had great booking at all. She just has two things working for her, a long title reign, and she's going out there and hitting home runs, grand slams every time she's in these matches. And in promos, her mannerisms, expressions, everything, she just captivates you. Because the booking, I don't think WWE knows what they're doing with the damage control. Don't get me started on, on Chinese talent like like uh, Xia Li. Like they, they made her, they allowed her to win two matches just so that they could feed her to people like Becky Lynch and who was it, Val from NXT? And then you didn't see Xia Li again. Tazawa's over there doing the Tazawa dance. I mean, that's great. People are giggling, man. But good luck if you ever in the future want to, like, push him. Good luck trying to get people to say, oh, man, Tazawa, he's a badass. You know what I mean? Like, really get behind him. No, he's the comedy guy. Anyway, Okada, man. Uh, I'd say I say it's a good problem to have. Okada's coming to the States. One of these companies will grab him. It's still a problem nonetheless. How are you going to utilize Okada? I can speak. Let's go to the next story. This is going to be, uh, what do you guys want to go? John Cena's exit strategy. This took a lot of headlines recently. John Cena is opening up yet again about how his time in WWE is coming to an end. He's trying to figure out currently how to close this pro wrestling chapter, this chapter with WWE. He's trying to find an exit strategy out of pro wrestling. So this has a lot of, especially John Cena fans, like, oh no, it's actually happening. You know, 41 is last match. Guys, I can tell you right now, just everything we know about John Cena, this is probably going to be one of those five-year plans. You ever hear of a five-year plan? That That's the, the dude in high school that was just a clown, right? He just... Not just not the smartest, but he just didn't care. And he was, you would think he was going to be there for 10 years, you know? He's not graduating. But those individuals, we would call they're on a five year plan. They're not graduating with their class, (laughs) they're going to be there an extra year in high school. (laughs) The five year plan, we called it. 
John Cena's not going anywhere. Even if they were to do this big hoopla for WrestleMania 41, Cena's last match, Cena is going to show up within the next five years plenty of times. He's going to have matches. I don't see him as truly retiring, even if they want to do a retirement match. I think John Cena is one of those dudes that's always going to come back home, he calls it. The Rock went on to become the biggest Hollywood star WWE has ever seen and ever will see. He does not need to do this at 50-something years old. Even The Rock comes back because he knows this not only is it exceptional business to do, but this is it's in his DNA. This is this is him. <laughs> there's no there's no way he's not going to come back just because he closed a chapter. He already did his exit strategy. And John Cena oh, loves this way more. This wrestling business encompasses John Cena way more than, than even Dwayne Johnson. And for Dwayne Johnson, this is literally his family heritage. But John Cena will tell you this is everything he is. Everything. So, while he's telling you this is pretty much it, maybe one last road to Mania 41 and then... It's been real. Check you. Deuces. Ooses. <laughs> BC is telling you, not so fast. This is going to be one of those five years, but it's going to be a while. But he's going to be asked this nonstop, so he always has to act like you or, or say something that's going to be appeasing, right? I know I'm getting up there in age. I know I'm transitioned to this different career. Uh, I'm working on it. John Cena, I don't see going anywhere. The, the, the bigger question is not really when. The bigger question is how does John Cena uh, finally, one day, in the far distant future, how does he actually end his time in WWE? Because he can't just go on the Jobber World Tour, right? Putting everybody over. He's already done that, guys. Remember the stat that somebody dro dropped when he was just back recently about how he's, he hasn't won a televised singles match in like years or something? It was wild. It was like years. He came back. He just puts a bunch of people over. Solo, he just catapulted to the moon and WWE did nothing with it. Solo Sokoa is an afterthought. SmackDown is on tonight. When I think SmackDown, Raw, WWE, Solo Sokoa is a far distant 70th individual that I would think of. I think of Tazawa and his comedy before I think of Solo Sokoa. They have ruined what John Cena gave, gifted with a, a ribbon and a bow on top. He gifted Solo Sokoa superstardom in WWE. Paul Levesque McMahon took a shit on it. Solo Sokoa is an afterthought. Solo Sokoa has done nothing since WrestleMania. I know. Well, BC, he had this big man. He tagged with Roman Bass. No, nothing. Nothing that you're going to remember. It is a shame. It is sad. But I've seen this dude come back and put everybody over. He can't do that for the next several years. John Cena is going to have to come back and eventually just start winning. And this is where everybody's going to cry. Same thing with the Cody Rhodes and, and Rock situation. right? I am part timer. How's anybody going to get over if John Cena's beat up? It's John Cena. If they're not over by the time they get to Cena, or if working with Cena afterwards doesn't get them over, that's on them. That's probably their problem in the company. That's not John Cena's fault. John Cena is John motherfucking Cena. At some point, you got to act like it. He's got to start beating these people. So the bigger question is, how do you have this exit strategy play out when it is time? How, not when. Whether it's 41 with a retirement match or WrestleMania 45 and he's still rocking. Maybe you see him uh, once or twice every couple of years, every couple of two, three years. It doesn't matter when, how you do it. He better start winning matches when he comes back. It'll make it more special for that final swan song. And even if they want him to win his final match, why is that such a bad thing? In pro wrestling, everybody, every single individual has to lose so they can pass that torch and that guy can go on and say, I beat this person. Well, John Cena's already got 10 individuals saying that. And you know the sad part? It hasn't moved their needle 
at all. Hasn't done anything for him. At this point, you have Cena come back and just be John Cena. It's okay to go out like John Elway. Painful memories of Super Bowl 32. John Elway, for years, could not get a Super Bowl. Years. He was finally at the end of his career. He knew that. He was with the Denver Broncos. They were taking on my Green Bay Packers in the Super Bowl. Brett Favre, second straight Super Bowl. The year before, we beat the Patriots. We won our Super Bowl title. And then we had the best team we felt in the NFL. We thought we were going to duplicate that. Run it back. Super Bowl 32, collect another one. And in the final plays, man, John Elway just soared over that, that end zone. And he won the game for, for Denver, man. Denver beat Green Bay in the Super Bowl. You talk about pain. I would have rather not even made the playoff playoffs had I known we were going to lose the Super Bowl because that is a uh, that was so hard to view. But John Elway won his Super Bowl. Won two of them, I believe, too, back to back. He's and, and then he just rode off into the sunset. They're like, well, what about three? I mean, you have all this momentum. It looks like you're playing at the best you've ever have played, even though it's the end of your career. And John Elway's like, I'm taking my Super Bowls. I'm out. I'm not leaving on a losing season. And that's what we remember, man. That's what BC remember. Not even a Broncos fan. I remember John Elway left as a winner. You know, sometimes it's okay to do that, man. Let's switch it up a little bit. Because by the time John Cena actually leaves, he might become really irrelevant, man. We're just going to look at him like a Brooklyn brawler, just with some star power behind him, right? He's a superstar, but man, he sucks at wrestling. (laughs) Uh, Moving on, Mandy Rose, recently fired. You're fired. I think it was Shawn Michaels who really like started the firing process, though. He's he did not like all of the. the stuff that Mandy was putting up on social doohickey machines or whatever, websites, whatever it was. And Shawn Michaels was kind of like, eh, we told you not to do that. But then Mandy was like, you didn't tell me nothing. Anyway, she didn't take anything down. She ended up being fired. Mandy Rose was, you talk about my momentum. Mandy Rose was on cloud nine. Mandy Rose was the champion. Mandy Rose had the look. She was starting to get this wrestling thing. Mandy Rose was becoming a star, guys. And when she started... She was one of those kind of ones we kind of laughed at, rolled our eyes. Oh, no, here comes Mandy. Here comes Miss Tough Enough. All right, let's get this over. Another beautiful bombshell blonde who's going to take some TV time. But no, she started taking this very seriously. She started to get really good at it. And right when she was reaching, like, even the, the, the start of her peak, gone, fired. Well, recently, and I don't know where this all came from, but there's been a lot of speculation, rumors, reports that Mandy Rose will be a surprise in the Royal Rumble. BC is here to tell you, not so fast. She actually commented on it. This is what Mandy Rose said. This is a quote. And, and we're going to try to decipher. She's not ruling it out. But I'll tell you what, what, I, got, what I got from reading this. So first, I'll... I'll quote it to you guys, and we'll talk about it. Mandy Rowe says the following about the Rumble. I don't know if I'll ever be back in WWE. I'm enjoying my life right now, and we're getting married soon. We got big plans, a lot of trips, and a lot of exciting things in the works. So that's your answer. You never shut the door. If I ever come back, it'll be for the fans, because I know you guys miss me, and I miss you too. BC, she's leaving it open, man. She said, never shut the door. I don't know if I'll ever be back in WWE. If I ever do come back, it's for you guys. I know you miss me and I miss you. So she's telling you she does miss this. BC, she's leaving it open. Guys, what I got from that is there has been zero talks at all of bringing Mandy Rose in for the Rumble. Sorry if that shatters any expectations, but I would simmer them down just so you're not disappointed. Not saying she won't be. But what I'm gathering from here, I mean, she. this sounds like somebody who truly has had zero conversations. She actually would love to come back with any type of a deal just to, to rekindle what she knows she lost. She's doing fine, by the way. Money-wise and all that, she is doing just fine. <laughs> Financially, she's probably not hurting. But... 
there's no doubt there's a lot. I mean, she was reaching, she was getting into her peak when she got fired, guys. That cannot be easy. That cannot be an easy pill to swallow. I mean, you, you got to have a lot of questions like, damn, what if this and what if that? And man, if I was still there, because it's got to be extra hurtful to see somebody like Tiffany Stratton come in, who a lot of people can say, oh, that's just the replacement for Mandy. The problem is Tiffany Stratton is amazing. Tiffany Stratton is amazing. She's got this wrestling thing down probably from day one. Right? We heard stories from her trainers where they, she was hard to work with because she just felt like she already had it down. Even though she's difficult to work with, to the trainers, I'm not saying she's that way backstage, but she just she knew she didn't have to do certain things or just didn't want to because she already has it locked down. The truth is, she does. <laughs> she does. She said recently, Tiffany Stratton, that she wants to stay in NXT just so she can learn even more. That's awesome. Right? To learn the things that she feels she actually does need to learn. The truth is, no, you don't. The promos you got locked down. The wrestling matches are locked down. The mannerisms, the expect you're ready to rock, girl. There's a lot more females that have half the potential and talent of Tiffany Stratton, and they get skyrocketed to the main roster way before they should be. A lot of them shouldn't even be. So anyway, it's got to be even, it's got to feel a certain way when not only are you fired, but then they bring in Tiff Stratton. And they're talking about her with the championship. And it's like, whoa, now even if I come back, do they even need me now? They have Tiffany Stratton, who's the blonde bombshell, who's really good. I like Mandy Rose. I do. I can't say I was a big fan when she first came upon the scene, but seeing the hard work she put in, seeing how, how talented she truly is. She dedicated herself to this thing. She had the character. The toxic attraction was really good. I would, dare I say, the stars of NXT for many weeks and months. With uh, JC and Gigi. What I got from this is that there's been zero conversations. And she's trying to like, you know, like she doesn't want to shut that door. She she loves being like, talked about in that light. Hey, I could be a surprise. But she also is trying to tell everyone, relax. You're probably going to be disappointed when the rumble is off the air. So I don't see Mandy Rose as a surprise, guys. And truthfully, I wasn't even hearing that. Until this week when all these stories popped up and I was like, what? Mandy Rose? And that's not the way you would bring her back anyway. Just in a, a surprise appearance. If you're going to bring back Mandy Rose, it's got to be something huge. And she has a mission in NXT. Maybe with Tiffany Stratton, for instance. That's the Mandy Rose story I got for you guys. And, um, all right, let's just talk about that. We got to do this again. The Cody Rhodes, Rock, Roman Reigns situation. We have talked about this to nauseam. You guys know how I feel about this. It's, it's not a debate to me. It's not just an agreement or disagreement to me anymore. Now we just have to look at facts, right? Because nobody is ever going to change one another's mind at this point. It should be The Rock. It should be Cody. It's like politics. You're not going to change the other side. Just stop. So now we just have to go to facts. The bigger match is obviously Rock and Roman, right? We all agree on that, I would hope, right? Money-wise, eyeball-wise, that's the bigger match. And you wouldn't put that at Elimination Chamber, right? We all finally know that. For a while, there was a... <laughs> there was this weird... There was only a portion of fans, thankfully, right? But there were some fans out there that truly thought that the Rock and Roman should be at Elimination Chamber so we can just get it out of the way and save Cody in the main event for Mania. Like the dream match for the ages. One of the biggest stories WWE could ever come across. The Battle of Tribal Chief. Rock and Roman. Family implosion. Let's throw that away at 5 a.m. for a lot of individuals. 5 a.m. Elimination Chamber. In front of 20,000 less individuals. Only 40 some odd thousand tickets sold. They're expecting a max capacity of 55, guys. You're hearing 60,000 from people that don't know what they're talking about. Simmer it down. 40,000 tickets sold, semod, and 50 semod supposed to be in the building. Well, 60 plus will be on two separate nights for Mania. One individual can help sell those out for WrestleMania. So that would be almost 130,000 individuals across two nights. So stadium-wise, Rock at WrestleMania is better business. 
Also, again, 5 a.m. at Elimination Chamber. So you're telling me one of the biggest dream matches. People, most people will sleep through their alarms. It's 5 a.m., 4, 3, 6 a.m. for individuals. Who knows? But most people are going to have to watch that on replay, on demand. That's how, that's your, that's your Rock and Roman match. Where everybody, when they finally do wake up, watches it on demand. Wow. Thank goodness these individuals are not booking pro wrestling. That's all I'm going to say. Honestly, I, without throwing shade or anything like that, thank goodness these individuals don't actually book pro wrestling shows. Because that would, ju- I mean, there's some things that individuals just shouldn't be doing. Pro wrestling is that thing for these individuals that think Rock and Roman should be at Elimination Chamber. Because that's a number, that's another level of ludicrousy. And these are just individuals that don't truly understand the business side of pro wrestling. So I understand that. Maybe they're just fans and they're just saying fan things. I get it. But th- this is a business, man. And and there's no way. And, and, and even if it, half the fans want to see Rock and Roman anyway, bare minimum. Dare I say even more than half. Because we know that's the better story. We know that's the better story. Cody in this finish the story is finished. That was done when he was laying next to the rubber chicken at 39. The story was done, right? Why is this a conversation again? But before we get into all of that, let's go to what re-sparked this conversation in the wrestling world. This was the brother of Cody Rhodes, Dustin Rhodes, who I praise all the time on this channel and justified. Dustin Rhodes, just like Randy Orton, they're two of the most flawless and fluent wrestlers you'll ever come across. They just make it look so easy. Dustin Rhodes is just phenomenal. And I hope before his career is over, I hope he gets one last mega push. With or without a title, I don't care. But this dude deserved way more than he got in his wrestling career. But Dustin Rhodes recently spoke on his brother and his situation for Mania. Dustin Rhodes says, and I quote, I hope Cody's in the main event spot against Roman. Or it's going to be The Rock. If it's Rock, yeah, I'm pissed. I feel it's Cody's time, but I get it. If it's The Rock, it's good business. Of course, the headlines you saw and all everybody wanted to talk about was, if it's The Rock, I'm pissed, right? First of all, that's his brother. What is he going to say if Cody's in the ma- if Cody is in the main event, I'm pissed? If Cody is on WrestleMania, I'm pissed. Take him off of Mania. Why is my brother on the show? He's going to say, yeah, if it's The Rock, I'm pissed. I want to see my brother in the main event. Of course Dustin's going to say that. How is this even a story, I would ask? But somehow this became a story. And people started like using Dustin's words like it's gospel. Well, Dustin said it. He's got to be in the main event now. How are people not seeing this? And then they don't even want to read the rest, right? They don't even want to concentrate on the rest where he literally says and i quote one line later but i get it if it's the rock that's just good business i get it if it's the rock that's just good business this is a business dustin knows that that wasn't a big part of the story though right if it's the rock i'm pissed that's it so then people say, well, well, BC, did you hear what Dustin said? Have you changed your mind a little bit now? Do you now see that it's just Cody's time? Because he does say that, right? Because uh, it's his brother, right? I feel it, it's Cody's time. Nothing against The Rock. I just feel it's Cody's time. And, 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 then, and then people are like, well, BC, did you change your mind at, at all on WrestleMania? That's the problem, R- right? Dustin and so many people keep using these cute little phrases like it's Cody's time. It's Cody's moment. No, it's not. It's not. That was last year at 39 was his time and his moment, right? The atmosphere told you that. Read the room. We all knew that it was time to take the title off of Roman. We all knew Cody's schedule. He was going across many countries, right? We already knew the schedule. Cody was going to bring that title around the world. He had the Brock Lesnar feud, which obviously Brock turning on Cody would only be because Cody has the title. Right, because he couldn't go for Roman anymore. That was a stipulation in their last. Everything was was Cody's time. It was Cody's time to get that title because it was Roman's time to lose it, and it was the company's time to go forward with this new champion and new face. 
The problem was Levesque McMahon called an audible. And I say last minute. It could have been literally last, down to the last hour. It could have been made weeks in advance. But for all intents and purposes, it was a last minute audible by Paul Levesque McMahon, who, who uh, to his credit, he basically took all blame in the media scrum afterwards. Sometimes you get it right. Sometimes you get it wrong. That was him saying, ooh, that man, did we suck the life out of the stadium, right? That wasn't just a fun, oh, the bad guy won. Man, what a WrestleMania, though, man. Oh, I can't wait till Roman, right? And everyone's still leaving kind of feeling good. You just witnessed WrestleMania. No, that stadium, people were leaving like it was a funeral. It was, just, it, was, it was not fun. People were saying that they're dumbfounded that that's how they left everybody hanging. Because we all read the room. We all knew that every, everything, all the evidence spoke to, we just have to have Cody as the champ now. It's, it's his time. It's his moment. And what happened with this audible is, BC said last year, right? Cody or bust. I, was t- I, I went on a, a whole fucking uh, tour uh, <laughs> all around WrestleMania saying Cody or bust. Cody or bust. Cody or bust. It's, it's exactly what I said. Because I knew. You, you, what, you can't string this along another year, man. So much happens in the wrestling world. People are going to come back. New stars are going to be created. You have to go different directions. You can't just, you can't just go, oh, well, you're not going to get it this year. We're going to have you go through struggle and adversity, whatever that even means. Here we are a year later. I still don't know what that even means. In, in Brock Lesnar matches, in a Judgment Day matches. Wow. Good thing we saw him struggle and, and be adverse. And, and, then, and then hope that you get to 40 and you're just going to run it back. And, and, and we're all supposed to be on board with it. That's the delusion in these fans, right? They're dumbfounded. That people like BC and so many of you that were not on board with this trash. And I'm a Cody Rhodes supporter. Still to this day, always probably will be. I like Cody. There's no way you're selling me that that's the bigger and better WrestleMania match. Just because you screwed up last year. And I notice it's a lot of the same fans that claimed Cody should not win last year. He needs to go through more struggle and adversity. Roman should have the title another year, and then Cody can get it. It's those same people that refuse to take the L on that, that are now saying, stuff the Rock and Roman at 5 a.m. at Elimination Chamber in another country, and put Cody in the main event so now he can finish the story. Now we feel better about Cody finishing the story. Now you feel better about it? Now we all have to watch the same match we saw a year ago, but now the title can change hands because you, you saw enough struggle and adversity from Cody this year. What did you see? A Brock Lesnar feud that had no purpose? And after he gets his arm broke for three times, he hugs it out with Brock. And then the rest of the year, he's taking on the Judgment Day. And now that was enough for you to say, okay, I feel good about this now. We can give the, t- the title to Cody now. And now that over half the fan base is not on board, you're dumbfounded. What is the problem? What is not? It's Cody's time, guys. No, we were saying it was Cody's time last, last year. That's Cody's time. Right? Last I checked, nobody within WWE made these individuals crying it's Cody's time. Nobody made them the ultimate decision makers within those walls. Thankfully. It's not Cody's time anymore. That's what these individuals don't understand. You're a year late. Long-term storytelling, BC. Hey, I love long-term storytelling. You know all that I ask for in long-term storytelling is the storytelling part. They went their separate ways after that Mania match. Cody went on his smiling world tour. He's smiling in his nice suits. Doesn't even care to talk about Roman. Roman's doing all his other things like uh, uh, vacation. (laughs) And now, just a little bit before Mania, just two months before Mania, are they going to cross paths? Are we going to try to reignite the story right before WrestleMania? So the story was nothingness right you're just going to go your separate ways and we're going to have finish the story lingering right that I, that's the whole story cody's finish the story is the story so you don't even need some fun stuff throughout the rest of the year between the two we'll just revisit this in the last two months and everybody will go oh wow it's happening again no half of us at least are not on board we're not on board because that's subpar 
That's that's mid AF now in 2024 for Mania 40. It's past that. We're past that. You botched it. You botched it, man. And we were not going to wait a year of nothingness to get back to the same match we just saw. And we're we're not we're not allowed to see the Rock and Roman, the Rock and Roman cousins. One thinks he's truly the tribal chief. The other knows he is. We're going to settle this once and for all. And we can't view that. We got to wake up at 5 a.m. or watch it on replay because it's Cody's time now. Because all of these individuals that cried it wasn't his time last year. Now, now they're ready to say it's his time. No, now we're the ones saying you're wrong. It's not his time anymore. It's not. No more than CM Punk's time. L.A. Knight. Randy Orton on all cylinders. There's a lot of individuals. A lot has changed in that year. A lot has changed. And there's a lot of things go. I, again, as a huge Cody supporter, that's not saying Cody doesn't have master plans going for or that the title doesn't go on Cody. I'm absolutely down with that. But to act shocked and befuddled and pissed because Cody might not be in the main event of Mania because a bigger, better for business match will take its place. That's a, that's another level of delusion that there's no more. There's nothing more that we can explain to you. If you can't comprehend it, then it, it you can't comprehend it. it. It's just something that you, you you're just not getting. So, at that point, you just got to sulk come WrestleMania weekend, right? Be pissed and cry about it, I guess. Nothing more that WWE could do. There's nothing more that BC, the unit, anybody else can do for you. Cody Rhodes versus Roman is not the bigger, better match anymore. It was last year, right? When Dustin and so many people say, I just feel it's Cody's time. Where were you last year, man? It can't be his time every year. Every year can't be his moment. Cody Rhodes is really good. I'm a, I'm a supporter of this dude because he's really good. And I see the potential. Cody Rhodes is not good enough to hold every year hostage. Every year cannot be Cody's moment. Every year. Cody's not that good, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry, not sorry. And, and, I, and since I've had this channel, uh, you guys know how big of a supporter I am of Cody. He ain't that good where every year it's his moment. It's his time. There's other people, man. You could say the same damn thing. Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, WrestleMania 12. I couldn't imagine Shawn Michaels not finishing his boyhood dream story, right? Remember? His boyhood dream was to collect that title. I couldn't imagine Bret Hart winning. Air sucked out of that stadium, but then, then to wait another year, and they don't even cross paths or nothing, and then you got to wait another year. And then, at WrestleMania 13, Shawn Michaels finishes his boyhood dream story. Wouldn't hit as hard, would it? Yeah, you guys who remember those WrestleManias, you know it wouldn't be the same thing. Would it the feeling you had at 12? I know. HHH botched majorly. And Cody has to suffer from that. I get it. I get, it, it sucks. I said Cody or boss last year. I get it, guys. And then you could have gone, you could have had Roman go on vacation the whole year, which he did anyway. The only time he showed up was for the family implosion with the Usos and Solo. So he never needed a title. The match at SummerSlam with Jimmy Uso was more for the or Jay Uso was more for the tribal lay, the red tribal lay. It wasn't even, the title was secondary. Nothing Roman did since Mania called for him to have the title. He could have stayed at home or had these matches. Cody could have had the title. And then you could have done WrestleMania, Roman Rock, titles not even needed. That's what I mean when I say that was a botch at 39, but it was a botch nonetheless. It was something that did happen, and that was Cody's moment. Sorry, not sorry if you feel like he got robbed and no matter what, he's got to finish the story now on the same stage against the same person because that's the only way you'll feel better about it. Tough. I tried to tell you, Cody or Bust, that this botch cannot happen. It happened and here we are. You have people like CM Punk who should be in a main event with Seth Rollins. I don't care if he's been gone for how long. Seth Rollins and CM Punk screams main event WrestleMania for the world title. We just hope that Seth Rollins can even compete. It's not looking good with that leg injury from Monday night. Randy Orton 
You could easily have Cody Rhodes win the title beforehand, Elimination Chamber, but Roman's not showing up. But it could be Cody at 5 a.m. watching on replay him getting the chance. And then you could have Randy Orton versus Cody Rhodes. That's a big match. L.A. Knight is a big enough star where he should have a mega match, not just going for a mid-card title with Logan Paul. It's other people's moments in time, too. It's WWE isn't just... It's not just about Cody Rhodes, man. More than half your audience is not on board with this damn story anymore because we know the story is over. That's the sad truth. Cody Rhodes' story is finished. Why don't you understand that? There is no story anymore. Him just saying I have to finish my story is no longer a story to more than half of us. So no, no, we're not going to change our minds a couple months before Mania. The Rock and Roman is WrestleMania main event status. Cody and Roman was WrestleMania main event status. One was for 39, Rock Roman for 40. Just the way it is. Dustin, it's his brother. Of course he's going to say that. Read the rest. Dustin says, and I quote, but I get it if it's the Rock. Just good business. We're going to end this giving a shout out to my right hand man on the channel, JR9 Gaming, first ever channel member, gold card, board of director. Bro, great. Uh, report, man. A couple things I want to touch base on. I only have 2% battery left. Um, but with the Lexus King thing, I love that, man. Um, talking more about the stories more than dream matches, dream stories. I also agree with the Roxy scenario. Putting her in this battle royal and winning that thing just as a replacement for Cora Jade. I see an L on the horizon. And Roxy is way more than just a filler for anybody. We wish the best for Cora J, by the way. Um, as far as Braun Breaker and now doing comedy with Baron Corbin, I'm so glad that's shining in your negatives, Jaronine Gaming. Braun Breaker doing comedy with Baron is for one purpose. They only care about trying to build Baron Corbin, to, to make people connect with Corbin. Because it's obvious they don't care if they hurt Braun Breaker. Braun doing comedy, they just want people to see that Baron Corbin has another side to him. He can be funny, and maybe fans will start to care about Baron. They don't even care about what they're doing to Braun right now. They're destroying this dude even more than they've already been. Pathetic. JC, I was able to see two things last, a couple of things last night. Uh, JR9, JC was really good in her backstage promo. And Dijak. Dijak showed you yet again in that backstage promo how good he is, not just in the ring, but he can carry promos and storylines. It's a shame they put him in retribution to pretty much die out. Dijak is main roster status yesterday. I don't know what the holdup is here. He's too damn good. Um, Pushback on the Oba Femi. Uh, dude, though, you gave him much praise, Jaronine, so I will watch with a keen full eye next time. But I did catch his promo. I gotta tell you, I'm seeing nothing special in this dude. Nothing that would catapult him past everybody else, throw a championship on him, and give him a rocket. I'm not seeing it, Jaronine. I thought the promo was absolutely average. The hoo-hoo is gonna get old in about yesterday <laughs> but at least he has fans doing the hoot hoot fans love to participate it gets uh, it gets obnoxious when it starts to become nauseating i hope it doesn't already because jr9 by the end of that promo i was already about to mute the television i'm not seeing anything big but if you have areas that i should be looking a little more keenful i'll look again but that promo did not do anything for bc at all Talking about how his college days, his days on the court or the field or his amateur wrestling background. We see too many of these dudes. I don't want to hear about what you did in the past athletically. Why are you a badass? And why are you holding a title in, 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 in your first freaking month of action, basically? That's the only pushback I have. You gave him much praise. I'll look again. I had the complete opposite viewpoint of this dude. I'm not seeing it. Um... But just a great report. I, I was able to get the entire report in over two coffee excursions. So <laughs> shorter lines yesterday. The last report, I had to read over three different sittings. So um, 
but uh, very extensive, very badass. And uh, NXT pulled 680, 690, something like that, thousand viewers. So they did drop from the 700s, uh, but there was a lot of buzz on the show. So um, as you ended it, Jar9, overall, um, a much better show. So we'll see, man. But a really good report, but I, I'm baffled by some of the, the booking in NXT and others. I see so much damn potential. The minute, the moment they get called up, sky's the limit. Whether it's a Roxy, a JC, a Tiffany, a Jack, and I'm starting to lose a lot of faith in this whole Braun Breaker thing. Guys, until next time, and it will be that next time with 1% battery left. BC saying check you. Go long! Let's do this. Green Bay Packers tomorrow night. Divisional playoffs against the 49ers. Let's do this the right way. Go long. Somebody, and you better catch this.